Tony Hibbard with the Assisted Band Director with a new video for you. Uh, this is going to be a quick review overview of the new Habits Beginner Method book. Uh, this is part one of the series because this is the first year that I've used it and I'm gonna review up to about line 50. Uh, before I get into this, I am not sponsored by the Habits uh, GIA Corporation or anything like that. This is just a, an as, as the subtitle says, an average Joe review. I'm just a normal band director that's um, put a lot of research and effort into what method book I wanted to do. And I just wanted to kind of show you what, what this method book offers. It's not to say that it's the best method book, but this is just what, what I have found out. Um, so the first thing that I want to go over <clears throat> is there are a lot of materials that are given before line one. Um, so one thing that I have done for many years now is I use the Teaching Rhythm Logically Rhythm Charts by uh, Darcy Williams. And um, this offers some that are built into the book and actually offers a lot more on the website that I'll show you here in a minute. Um, it also emphasizes solfege right from the beginning, which I really like. Um, and it's really helped with um, ear development and having even beginners start to listen to each other. Um, it does small instruments and what their starting pitches are. And what small instruments is the brass use just their mouthpiece, the flute use just their head joint, the clarinets use the mouthpiece and the barrel, and the saxophones use the um, mouthpiece and the neck. Bassoon uses uh, the reed and the vocal, and I just used the whole oboe for my oboe player. Um, and then, you know, it gets them set up on a fundamental pitch, and then uh, goes into tonguing on those small instruments. And then in the director's book, there's pages of teaching tools and lessons for the director. So I won't get into what all that is, but there's there's plenty of material for you to work on before line one. And if your band is set up like mine, I have all instruments in one class, and it takes a while to get everybody set up on instruments and everybody to get instruments in hand and everybody to get books in hand. Uh, we're a Title I school, so nothing happens quickly for me. Um, so the rhythm charts and solfege really give me a lot of material up front that aren't really instrument specific that are still getting, um, that are still teaching, teaching them fundamentals. Um, so a quick thing about the horns. There's no ideal progression in a full band setting for horn. I think almost everybody knows that. Um, it gives the horn uh, two options. You can do the horn in fifths, which basically they're playing the same thing that the trumpets are. And then there's the unison option, um, which has um, them playing the same notes as everybody else, just in a more difficult range, depending on the player. And I have uh, two different horn players that are in two different classes. And if one took the, the fifth option and one took the unison option, because that's just what worked, for them and they both ended up in the same place so you know there really isn't a right or wrong way but let me show you really quickly what that looks like um, so here is the horn book um, and these are side by side so if you see right here this is page three full band in unison starting pitch is C and then goes to B flat and then goes to A and then um, this is 3A, so this is the horn and fifths option here. So it starts on G, then F, and then E. Same notes the trumpets start on. So it just depends on the player, but it gives them two options. Um, and then if we go to the next page, this is back where they're in unison. Um, it goes to G, so it gives them the option for low G. Or jumping up to high G and then a the same thing gives them the option for um, 
high A or low A, so they're starting to learn different octaves of, as well. Um, and depending on how sharp your horn player is, um, they can bounce back and forth between the two pages, and then they end up learning a lot of notes from the get-go. Um, and then this is the, back to the horn in fifths, so their next note is D, and then um, I missed a note somewhere, and then it goes to C. Um, but that's that's the horn starting book. Um, again, there's no ideal way, but I think that this is the the best setup that I've seen so far because it it doesn't really get them in extreme ranges without giving them a, a second option. I right, don't want that yet. Okay, um, and then just a quick note about the percussion book. Um, it does start with um, some pictures that are easy to read easy to see on all the auxiliary instruments that they will play throughout this book. And they play quite a bit. Um, and all new material is in green. And I'll get to that more here in a little bit. Um, but there goes over the four strokes, rebound stroke, controlled stroke, stroke upstroke, and multiple bounce stroke. Um, I think some people use some different terminology for that, but um, it's all the same material. And then, just like the horn book, we have a three, which is the mallet side, and then this would be the opposite side of the book, is three A. So this is the snare side. So you can have them bounce back and forth between mallet and percussion pretty easily. I know some method books, the front half of the book is mallet and the back half of the book is snare or vice versa. And if you're wanting them to jump back and forth, you know, sometimes that takes time. Whereas this one, they can stay open to the same page and really have them set up right next to each other. And then it's, it's a much quicker transition. Um, but it gets into rolls <clears throat> and non-rolls on the mallets really quickly. So I've been really pleased with how the percussion book is set up as well. Um, and one thing that I missed, let's see if I can find it without driving you guys crazy. Um, it has, this is in the first, like in the introduction pages, it's got the Roman numeral right here. Um, the 10 essential rudiments that are covered in this book. So it goes over the single stroke roll, double stroke roll, you know, all of these are introduced in the first, in this book. So that's a nice, a nice um, reference page for them to have as well. All right. Um, so the next part, I'm going to be kind of bouncing back and forth between the computer screen and then actually looking at the book. Um, the first 17 lines, which is kind of like my, my first benchmark, it's the first playing test. Um, there are, there's flexibility with the starting notes. I know some people like to start on a concert F, some people like to start on a concert B flat. If you're weird like me, you like to start on a concert D and it's kind of in the middle. Um, but there's some flexibility with that and I'll show you here, um, in a minute what that looks like. Um, what I like is it mixes whole notes, half notes, and quarter notes really quickly and all of their rest equivalents. Um, so it really get, gets the kids reading a lot of things at the same time um, and really builds their fluency <clears throat> from the get-go. I have found that it um, that both of my classes that I have moved really, really slowly but they know a lot more. So I, I find that it, it takes a lot longer to get through, you know, the first page and then to get through the second page. But they, they seem to be more literate um, in this progression. Um, and line 17 is the same as 5A and B flat and the habits for a middle school musician. So there is a lot of um, easy crossover between the green book, the beginner book, and then the yellow book that, that is already a, a, a very popular book. So let me pause this and then I will switch over and start showing you what some of these pages look like. All right, so here's some of the, the things that I wanted to show you. Right now I'm looking in a trumpet book, 
Um, but in the inside cover, it's got all the pass off. So all the playing tests, there's 22 playing tests throughout this. Um, and then it gives us some warm up techniques and practice, practice techniques. And then there's also an activation code that I'm covering up with my hand that I'll get into later. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys really quickly what the first couple pages of the student books look like. And each in instrument's gonna be a little bit different, but a lot of it's the same. So just some tips on practicing and tips on breathing. Um, of course, depending on the instrument, shows all the instrument parts and names, and then getting the first sounds on your small instrument. And then uh, this is treble clef, so it's got all the treble clef stuff. Bass clef will have the bass clef stuff. Just some basic glossary of terms. And then um, the musical alphabet stuff and a rhythm tree. And then here's where you can start using stuff from the first day of school. Um, even if they don't have instruments because these are available online and I'll get to that here soon. Um, so this starts the rhythm charts, starts off with quarter notes and then gets to half notes and whole notes and all that stuff. Uh, mixing up the rhythms with it as well and then plenty of stuff to work on there um, you know even getting into two four time three four time and six four time if you're feeling adventurous and then um, some solfege stuff and then they have a lot more than this that I'll show you here in a minute um, but you know pushing rhythm and pushing solfege you know will really help build a good foundation with with your uh, with your students. <clears throat> okay, so now switching gears and going over to the the uh, director's book. Um, like I said before, there's all kinds of lessons and stuff like that. I don't want to show all this, you know, right away. But um, plenty of things to read if you're completely lost. If if you've never taught beginners before and you're not really sure where to start, that gives you a good a good template on where to get started. Um, so what I had mentioned before on how there's flexibility with the first first notes, if you want to start off on concert F, you start off on line one, okay? And then it goes from line one to, um, it, from, I'm sorry, after you get through line one, it goes from just playing whole notes to instantly going to quarter notes. And then in the rests, Sometimes it gives them four quarter rests or one whole rest. So they're starting to see how those two um, can work together. Um, and then one complaint I do have with the director's book is the new notes are on one page and then the actual line is on the other page. The more years you do it, the less you need that new, new note page, but it's nice to have everything on the same page. Minor complaint not a deal breaker for me. Um, and then down here at the bottom, it's got all kinds of teaching tips. So this really aims towards um, all levels of directors because directors that have done this for a long time, it's nice to have those uh, tips down there. And you'll see as I go through this, I have some of them highlighted that I really need to make sure that I'm touching on. Um, and then all the way down to beginners. You know, My first year of teaching beginning band, it was a disaster. I didn't know what I was doing. And I think, uh, if I had had all of this material, I would have been in a lot better shape. Um, but anyways, goes to concert F and then concert E flat. And then it goes to introducing half notes by line four. And then um, the next note is concert D. Um, and then line seven goes between concert D, E flat and F and then mixes all those up. Okay, so that's kind of like the top half of your um, starter notes. And then um, what I did was I actually started on line six, because I like to start on concert D, because um, it's kind of like right in the middle of concert F and B flat, so my brass have a higher success rate I'll sometimes, you know, my, my high brass struggle to hit that concert F, and my low brass struggle to hit concert B flat, so I find that's a good halfway point. Um, and everybody's pushing something down, or their, their slide is not in first position, so they actually have to move to play that first note, so that's, that's my two cents about all that. But I taught line six, 
and then I skipped to line 10, which is concert C. So now I'm working my way down to concert B flat. And then line 11 only does concert C and concert D. And this is, this is how I'm showing that you can build flexibility with where you start, okay? And then I jump ahead and teach concert B flat. And then number 15 only does concert B flat, concert C, and concert D, and then mixes all those up. So you can kind of bounce around within the first 17 lines and kind of guide your students the way you want to. Um, so that's what I did, and I think this sticky note here kind of, yeah, I have number 6, number 10, and number 11. Those were the first three lines that I taught out of here. And then once they were comfortable with, with 15, you know, going between B flat, C, and D concert pitches, then I went back and started picking up all the other notes that we had, we had skipped before. And then, you know, the... The arrival point is line 17. That's the first playing test. And like I said before, it looks strangely familiar if you have used this book before to, uh, let's see, where's that? To this one right here, okay? 5A and B flat, it's the same thing. Okay, the percussion notes are different, obviously, but as far as what the band is doing, it's the same. So there's some continuity there. Um, and it's a really good playing test to see if your students understand everything in the first, first you know, section of this book. It has whole notes, whole rest, half notes, half rest, quarter notes. It does not have a quarter rest as far as your wind players are concerned. Um, but uh, it's a really good first playing test for your students. Um, one complaint I have about how the percussion is set up is if you have a bunch of percussion like me, you know, you, this is me, I don't want all of my percussion on snare. I don't want all of my percussion, you know, I, I start my percussion off on mallets. And then once we start switching to the battery percussion, I like switching them between snare and bass and there's not a snare and bass option so I just have them double up but um, even when um, there's two lines here um, it's more for like right hand and left hand and then both at the same time so I, I divide that and have you know snare read top line bass read bottom line just like they would in a, in a normal piece of music so that's kind of a quick summary of the first 17 lines and let me switch it back over to the computer all right so my uh webcam has popped up for this section so i'm still trying to figure out technology um so in this next section we're going to go over the supplemental materials that are offered in this um so they have more solfege they have a beginner series um, instructional videos um, duets for those that like to do solo and ensemble with your beginners and then rhythm charts and they're set up like the habits middle school musician which i'll show all of you guys here in a minute um, but if you do the online component of this um, and this is called habits universal okay so first it's got um, clinic videos so it shows you know we're doing we're always trying to push more double reads so it offers a quick introduction and I know there's YouTube videos and stuff like that that do this as well but this gets a little bit more in-depth my internet is slow okay so it has these players just kind of introducing bassoon and it has that for all the instruments and then um, it has accompaniment tracks for every line in the book daily warm-ups horn and fifths warm-ups warm-ups horn and fifths exercises so lot, lots of stuff that you can use in class I've, I've used the accompaniment tracks 
um, and and in, it it serves many purposes. Um, it has the the students have to play along with the recording, and there's not necessarily a tuner or a tuner a metronome, so they get used to hearing you know, a band or a group instead of a metronome. And it also makes them listen. And it also helps with them seeing how their sound fits in with the accompaniment tracks. Um, and then the resources tab, there is all kinds of stuff. There's more rhythm charts, uh, percussion grooves that you can play along to, uh, first day's rhythm examples. So let me pull that up real quick. A lot of this stuff I've downloaded already. So here's what I was saying that you can do in class. And they've got one for each. You know, here's sequence 6.2. Okay, so a lot of things that you can use in class just to help build rhythm fluency with your students, even if they don't have um, instruments yet. Um, there's a whole list of three note songs. Let me pull this up real quick um, so I can show you. I've got all this in a folder because I've downloaded a bunch of stuff. Um, so it's got three note songs. And this uses concert B flat, C, and D. But it's got all of these three note songs. It's three pages worth. So again, if you're like me and you like doing concert D, C, and B flat, I did a couple of these for my first concert. So it really, really helps helps with that, that introduction. Um, and then going back to um some of the things that are available there's duets so if it's christmas time there's some duets and then it's got it for all the different instruments and they're flexible duets um and then um it's also got uh full pieces of music that only use the first five notes. So this one's Aztec Warriors, and actually it doesn't use the first five notes. It's got a few extra things going on. Um, and then we've got uh, as we go back into this. No, it's not the right window. All right. Sorry, I'm trying to get back. There we go. I've got too many windows open. Um, so it's got the beginner series, which was that Aztec warrior song or whatever that I was just showing you. It's got the duets. Um, and then let me show you the rhythm charts. So they start off very simple and then gradually get more difficult, obviously. And then as you get to this, we've got, of course this is number 20, and this is six, eight rhythms. So it gives you the rhythm, and then it gives you a melody to go along with it. And that's that's exactly how the, the rhythms are set up in the, middle school habits book um, or book two if you want to look at it that way um, so i really like that i have my students count the line and then i have the students play the line on a concert pitch i usually do concert f but i do mix it up and then they actually play play a melody that works with that rhythm so um, again this is all free stuff um, that you can use and then the last thing that i want to get into is uh, the instructional videos. So if you've been following the show for a while, about a year ago, I started to do like um, a flute introduction video. And I said I was gonna start doing 
um, introduction videos for all of the instruments. And then I got into it and it was taking a ton of time and a ton of video editing. And I was just kind of losing my drive to do it. And then I saw that they had already done this. So this is line one on alto. So the students can play along, hear what a characteristic sound sounds like, match pitch with a professional on their instrument. Okay, and this is the conducting one. Again, that access code that I was covering up earlier in the video. Uh, there's an access code for the conductor, and it's got all kinds of videos for the conductor. So you can pull up any one. You know, this is trombone 97. I don't even know what this is. But if your trombones are struggling, you can be like, hey, listen to this or watch this. So lots of resources there. Obviously, if um, if your student has a trombone book, they're only going to get the trombone exercises. But literally every line in the book is played out for them. So that was a huge selling factor for me switching over to this to this method book. Um, and then lastly, uh, beyond line 18, and then I want to switch switch cameras again and go to the actual book to show you some of these. But lip slurs are introduced early. I love that because it helps the brass really tune their ear to those two different pitches. Um, and understand, you know, which one sounds like what. Um, and then slurring is, is introduced early um, in conjunction with the lip slurs. So your woodwinds are getting used to slurring and popping all the fingers at the same time. Um, it gives specific help for trombones because, you know, trombones cannot truly slur. Um, and then it's got some Christmas songs introduced early for those that need, need it. I never get to it that quickly. Um, but not all, not all band programs are created equal. Um, finger roll exercises for clarinet. So it goes into great detail on how the clarinets need to use the side of their finger and roll up to that A. And then again with the bassoons, because they have to half hole that first finger for G. So exercises to help reinforce that. Uh, staccato is uh, introduced methodically. Um, I thought it was introduced ter too early, personally but I gave it a shot and my, my beginners ran away with it and now we're working on staccato, so which I've never done with beginners before, so that was introduced appropriately. Line 47 is um, 5B in the habits book, or in the middle school habits book. So if you're really familiar with that, by line 47, they know A and B and B flat. Um, I like the way that uh, accidentals are introduced. They introduce the accidental first, do a couple exercises with that, and then they introduce the new key signature that uses that note. Um, and then by line 49, they're playing in the key of F. So it's introduced a lot of new notes uh, fairly early. And again, the beginners are just kind of absorbing it all and running with it. And then line 50, finally, it's going into chromatic lip slurs. And I'll show you what that looks like here in a minute. Um, so let me switch gears again, and we will go to looking at the book. All right, so uh, now that we're back in the book, we have line eight, 18, which introduces the first duet. And for my solo ensemble, if my beginners wanted to do a duet, they had to pick this, because I forgot about the duets they offered online. Um, so, of course, it's hot cross buns, um, you know, and all the kids know that. And then 19 starts to introduce the um, lip slurs by going between concert B flat and concert F. And then a lot of exercises start doing this. They do the concert F down to B, B flat. So it's starting to build that fluency going down the scale, which I like. Um, and then line 20 has the lip slurs going back and forth. And then... 21 starts the slurring with uh, starting on a concert F and then just going down diatonically and then again concert F down to B flat so building the technique and fluency with that and then gives reminders of the ta-da 
for the trombones, and that's actually in the trombone book as well. Um, and then, again with this one, concert F down to B flat. Uh, go tell Auntie, go tell Aunt Rhody, um, with rests built into it, which I like. I didn't like it first, but it just helps the students breathe. Uh, lamb chops is Mary had a little lamb, you know, with rest spilt in, so it's kind of chopped up, uh, chops, um, but it's still, uh, you know, fundamentally there. Um, and then starts messing with thirds, you know, slowly building in the fluency with that. Um, and then with each of the playing tests, there's a rhythm prep for it, which I forgot to show for the first one. Um, and then again, percussion, you know, advancing rhythmically faster than, than the winds and then mallets are right there with them. Um, and then, uh, Beethoven's Joy, Ode to Joy, a good first, you know, true piece for the band to play together. Um, and then we're getting into the Christmas songs for those that need that. Um, and then here's where it introduces Concert G, and then it's got FR for finger roll for the clarinets, um, and then of course a bassoon going from F to G, and then finger rolling again, and the very next line, so now the clarinets are going from E to A, you know, and making sure that you don't hear that G pop out in between, so lots of good exercises with that, and then the same with bassoon going from D to to G, making sure that it's not not hiccuping or anything, so really working on that finger roll for those two instruments. Um, and then, you know, moving forward, starting to progress faster, um, Shining Stars, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, introduces dynamics. Now that is one thing that I still ignored in the book, because I still want my students playing with a good full sound. So I just tell them to ignore the F and P. Um, our concert is in two weeks, so I may go back and pick that up right away. Um, there may be some correlation with me telling the students to ignore it as beginners and then them not being able to read it as well as second year players. Um, so again, going through, and you'll see that I'm starting to highlight things that I need to focus on more. So. Again, clarinets going from E to A and not getting that blip right here, not getting that G blip to happen in between. Um, London Bridge in 4-4 four, four, and then London Bridge in 2-4 in a variation. So it starts to slowly introduce different time signatures, which if you're doing the rhythm charts, you know, that's not going to be a problem either. Um, because they, they should already be fluent with different time signatures. And then your seventh note is concert A, so you get to do the Jaws thing. Um, and then, again, the teacher tips, check the accuracy of second position for trombones, and then clarinets check the right-hand positions. Need, uh, fingers need to go straight across, not angled. So just little tidbits like that are at the bottom of every exercise that uh, really help. Um, and then again, I have my students ignore the forte and piano. I just want them playing with a full sound, always and forever. Um, and then more more exercises in 2-4. And then here's where we get into articulation, which I thought line 44 was too early for beginners. But as I said before, I was definitely proven wrong. Um, so again... Still that concert F down to B flat, but now it's staccato. And my kids actually said that they enjoy playing this one, which I, I found weird, but you know, I'll go with it. Um, and then up and down the ladder. So you're just going up and down concert B flat to F and then back down staccato and then legato. And reversing it F to B flat, you know, staccato and legato. Um, I just skipped this, this, completely because again I don't want my students messing with um, dynamics yet and then 47 uh, like I said before this is line B in this in the habits book the second habits book this one 
Um, so that's this one where it goes up the first six notes and then it goes up in thirds in the first six notes and then catches that, that low concert A before it comes back up. Um, and then again, teacher tips, review to soon half hole difficulty between E flat and G and then remind trumpets to kick out their third valve slide for D. Um, and then 48, this is the eighth note now. So in its concert E flat, and it's got them shaded um, in the book. Let's see, and in the student book, I believe it, everything that is new is green. So the accidental and the student book looks like this. Okay, I'm sorry, how the accidental carries through the measure is like that. So we've got the F sharp introduced for the trumpets, F sharp with staccato. And again, I have my students ignore dynamics. Um, and then by 49, they've got a new key, key signature. Okay, they don't know that second sharp yet, but it's it's in a different key. So not everything is concert B flat. Um, and then again, here's here's what that looks like for the other instruments. And then it gives a reminder that the first note is different because of the key signature. So it's kind of lining those up. And then um, line 50 is the lip slur number two. So looking at the brass here, we've got C, uh, G, C, G, and then it goes down a half step because now they know F sharp to B flat or B natural, and then it goes down another half step. So F, B flat, F, and then E, A, E. So you're starting to build that chromatic lip slur down, which I didn't bring it up in here. But it is the same as number six in this book. Let's see where to go. It's the same as this one. So line B in the book of the, the middle school book. So again, um, crossover between this book and what they will get into if you decide to use the, the, the yellow habits book or the middle school habits book, which I've used for several years and I can let you know in a couple years the the connection between the two, but so far I'm, I'm already finding a lot of good carryover between it. And then if your feeder program uses the high school book, you know, then it just everything kind of feeds all the way up. Um, so that's my that's my average Joe review. Again, I'm not getting anything on this. I'm just you know letting everybody know my thoughts and how it's worked for my program. Um, I've got about 50, be 50 beginners spread across two classes, um, and again, in a Title I school. So I'm definitely not a ritzy middle school, but I've, I'm definitely not, you know, there are definitely middle schools in worse, worse shape than I am. Um, so if you have any questions, you know, comment below. If you've made it this far, please like and subscribe and send this to anybody who is looking to try a new method book. Thanks, guys.